Yeah, what's up, everybody? You're listening to Under the Stars here on 89.5 FM WSOU, and we're here with My Chemical Romance, and you just heard the opening track here. Honey, this mirror isn't big enough for the two of us. Coming off of I Brought You My Bullets, You Brought Me Your Love on Eyeball Records. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves and open up those cans of Coke? Hey, hey what's up? I'm Gerard. Hi, I'm Mikey. Hey, I'm Ray. What's up? I'm Otter. I'm Ray. Wait, wait, wait. He's p- actually Poupon. Poupon. <laughs> Are you Gray Poupon or just Poupon? No. no, just no it's Don Juan no, Poupon. Poupon. Don Juan Poupon. I see. Poupon. So, um, oh, all right. So, um, we're, we're here chilling with my chemical romance. So if anyone has any questions or any, uh, any, anything to say to them, you can give us a call here at 973-761-WSOU. You know, they want to hear, they want to hear some feedback. They've been gone for a while. So, uh, let's, let's start talking about that. Since, okay. uh, since the first record dropped, which is a song that we just played off here, um, what has changed in your lives? I know that you've went from local, uh, you know, local band to a national band. So yeah. let's hear about that. That was, I mean, well, it was really hard at first because we weren't really used to it. We we played like, um, we played like a lot of halls and stuff, well, not even that many. Like it, so it it was a really fast learning experience because we had to go from playing halls to playing like fairly fairly sized venues to to enormous venues. You know, right. it's a really short amount of time. I remember one of your first shows was was that I mean, first bigger show was that. Uh, the Allentown yeah. Jimmy Eat World yeah, Show. Yeah, Jimmy Eat World. I mean, that and was... And how was that? How was that different from playing to, like, you know, you, you went from playing to, like, 50 well, kids in a VFW I mean, to played, playing to, like, The best part is we played it just like we played a hall. You right. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check this out. So we, so we go to that show. We get there super early. There's all these huge tour buses there. We roll up in this crappy van. Like, <laughs> it was a rent van. Yeah, it was a rent van. We parked next to Jimmy Eat World and a Giuliani Theory. Bus. Buses. And we showed up, and they were like... All right, so like they're like up, <laughs> but like okay, dude. We, we hung out for like three hours or something, and then finally we get to do our we finally get to do our sound check, right? And the dude comes up and he's like, "Yo, um, do you have an input list?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me get right back." So I walk over and I'm like, "I don't know what an input list is." I'm talking about. <laughs> you don't know either. So we walk back and. I'm like, all right, dude. What's an input list? Like, it's it's how many, how many, like a bass, all your instruments, how many mics you got, everything. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'll I'll come up with it. And then we were doing a sound check, and it was like, it was the first time I had ever heard myself. And it was coming out of these little things right by the stage, and I was like, what are these? And they were monitors. And I never, I never knew. What, and they were calling them wedges and stuff. And I was like, what are these things? You know. So. So that was the first. That was that was a great show because we could all hear ourselves really good, you know. And then so from there, I mean, we've never played a show that makes sense. But what I always remember about that show it was just like. Listen to the mic, bro. It was just like that Motley Crue video. Um, what, what was it? Like, uh, Mom, I'm coming home. No, uh, uh, Home Sweet Home or something. Because like you know how it starts out with ADMT, it gets like, it's like the same thing. It was so weird. Because like we're just like Jim Peep file in and like yeah. uh, it was just like the weirdest thing. <laughs> but, yeah, by the time we were playing, they're like, like yo, I think it was like seven thousand people wait, here. Yeah, like, that was a terrible analogy. Right. <laughs> that was a really good analogy because it was a lot like that. There was like lots of crew people running crew, around, come on, constructing man. a stage, and then they all loaded Ozzy our stuff on, something. and we were like, no, we'll do it, and they're like, no, we're paid to do this. We're like, no, 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 dude, like we do it every show, like we could load our stuff, and they're like, no, we get like paid by the hour. We're union, and we're like, what is this? We're union. <laughs> Like there's these guys that load your stuff on, so, so that was that was the first eye-opening experience. But then you know, obviously, we got a lot of hard lessons on the road. But it was all always fun, sometimes very hard. But like it was a lesson, and very quickly we had to learn it. You know. Since then, what have been your favorite kind of shows? I mean, you've played oh, uh, now. You've played in front of seven thousand people, yeah. and you played in front of one hundred fifty people. Crock like, shop, Cleveland. How many kids were there? Amazing. That was like uh, seven 30. million. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, like that place maybe fills like maybe squeezes in a hundred, and like stuff like knitting where it's like three hundred, where it's like we're up close, really personal. Um, there's air condition. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, those are our favorite shows. Like we've played right. the huge ones, we played the me- medium sized ones, and the small ones are still the best ones. What, what show have you been the most comfortable at? Like been treated the most like you know. High status at uh, <laughs> none. <laughs> yeah, Amsterdam. 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 Yeah. Amsterdam huh? yeah, in Europe we got a deli tray, oh, but other than that, it's been like. Food, but other it's, than that, it's been like, are you guys here to clean the toilets? Like stuff like that. Like they don't even know where the band is playing that day. <laughs> and uh, 
And but uh, we've been treated okay on the road. They're, everybody's got yeah. stories about it, but high profile. Like our Irving was kind of high profile. I thought not for us, but no. it was a high profile. I mean, I'm talking about you guys personally. Yeah, he took so many waters and get y'all. Like, I'm, talk- right. I'm talking about you guys perf- perfect, uh, personally. Where have you been treated the best? Like, by, like you know, crowd or by the people. Crowd or people. Either. either, whatever, whatever um, you remember, like sticking out in your mind, like like all that? these guys treated like. Madrid. Yeah, Madrid. <laughs> we were treated oh, the best because you know yeah. what? We started playing honey because they thought they, we were a soccer team, and they thought <laughs> we were a soccer team, and we started playing honey, and they just started clapping hands like, hey, 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 hey. and I'm like, no these guys think we're at a soccer they game, like, and dude, after. They were saying, what was it like? Go rock home, Yankee. <laughs> rock and roll or something. It was like Remember the best. And they're, like, they're just clapping like we were seriously right. about to score a goal. And like, <laughs> and they're just, hey, hey, hey. And they went to honey. And they like were singing these words in English. Like they didn't even speak English. It was like the coolest <laughs> thing ever, you know. But so they, got, they, they already knew your music before you got there? Yeah, because they all, they, they got it off the intranet. And in, they the intranet, huh? stole it. And these, these like whole group of kids came up from Portugal. Nice. And they were like, we love yeah, it was like band. three hours or something. We love metal. We love heavy metal. And like, you're going to play heavy metal. And we're like, yeah, we're going to play heavy metal. <laughs> and like, it was just like the best thing in the world. Dude. There was even three girls when we pull up in Barcelona wearing yeah. homemade, homemade MCR shirts. Yeah. Nice. Homemade were shirts. they good? They were yeah. sweet. Yeah. 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 They were sweet shirt. <laughs> All around the town that said, go home, Yankee trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously. Like, the day. Yeah, they were having a, because of the war, they were having a protest in Madrid. Uh-huh. And we were like, dude, we're not going to make it. You know, like, <laughs> we're gonna, they're going to burn us. <laughs> and the kids, like, they didn't even care. They loved it. <laughs> go home, Yankee trash. Well, yeah. yeah, they were so, they at the embassy. Yeah. Die yeah. your Yankee blue jeans. Yeah, die. Die <laughs> your Yankee blue jeans. Like, it was awesome. Uh, God, how, well, how did they voice. receive you guys knowing that? Oh, that I loved it. Yeah, I loved American. Everyone rock and thinks roll. I'm a female. Rock American rock and roll. I am actually a male. They loved it. <laughs> they love clapping. I have the they worst voice clapping. ever. And they, Excellent. I'm gonna well, talk lower. We're treated pretty good in Europe. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not important. Whatever. <laughs> it's just. Hi, Mike. How are you doing, Mikey? <laughs> I am wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have another Coke, please. <laughs> All right, so we're out here. We're hanging out with uh, My Chemical Romance. We're going to play a couple songs from uh, their first CD and then talk about their future a little bit because I know that everybody here out in New Jersey who supported My Chemical Romance since day one um, is wondering what's going to happen next. What's next? They've been on tour since November. They just came back. They're spilling coke coke all over my my table over here. Someone's got to get, like, like, napkins. You know, it's a, it's a mess out here. So we're, we're going to talk to them. But first, we're going to hit Drowning Lessons. And, um, Wait, you can't curse. That's then, what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we play something else instead of driving lessons? Let's play. Uh, Wait, let's play. Um, what do you want to play, man? What do you want to play? What do you want to hear? Oh, man. Wait, play. I want to hear Monroe. No, no Monroe. Hear Monroe. Uh, Eddie, Eddie, to... Eddie, it's Eddie's birthday. Our tw- Eddie's birthday. 80 years no, old. Eddie, 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 he's the most amazing. He wants to hear Monroeville. He wants to hear Monroeville. Play Monroeville for your birthday, Eddie. Here's Monroeville. For that young buck. Yeah, track it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna hear uh, Monroeville. It's a slow one. You Grab your any, girl um, and then shoot her in the head. <laughs> Whatever. Give us a call. Nine seven three seven six one W S O U. We're here with my chemical romance. Yeah, we're back here on eighty nine point five FM W S O U. And uh, you listen to Under the Stars here with My Chemical Romance. So um, you just heard uh, Monroeville here from uh, My Chemical Romance. Gerard. Yo. Um, I remember a long time ago when, when you were recording this record that you had a problem while you were singing the song. Yeah, I had, a, I had a hole in my tooth and an abscess in the hole. And it was pushing against all the nerves in my face. And it looked like I had Parkinson's. And it was drag. And it was, <laughs> Her face was droopy. And... It was droopy. And I... Looked at, and I went to hospitals the whole time we were recording, and they thought I had facial nerve paralysis, nerve damage. So I had to do that song, like, basically with, yeah, like the most intense pain, a half a face. Half a face. So, all right, everyone listening out there, now you know he did this song with half a face. Half a face. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you feel about the song after you played it? I, I know you must have been, like, this, you know, like... 
this can't be the best I could do because you're all messed up and stuff. It felt, it felt like yeah. that. I mean, well, I know. That's what you when I was thought, doing it, now, when you everybody it. was so psyched so, on it when I did it. Like, psyched. People were crying. We were dude. crying, man. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, it was we were definitely amazing. a bunch of wusses. Definitely the most amazing. That. All right. Correction. Not a bunch of wusses. Ray and Otter cried. <laughs> that's what happened. I will definitely say I... I the Red Sea might have been parted. Evil. When my brother did that part. I cried. I think Alex <laughs> might have shed a singular tear. A singular tear? There was definitely some crying going on. After it was that bad, one. dude. I got a hug. I got lots of hugs after that. <laughs> so, all right, so how'd you feel about the hugs afterwards? The hugs were sweet. <laughs> the, ra- the record was sweeter. It was a good time. It was the salad days. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Roy Rogers fixing bar. <laughs> what is Mikey talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> it was not. It was, they, were, it was, it was, they were sweet days, sweet times for my chemical romance. So how are you guys happy? Are you guys happy with the record the way it came out now? Now, like in retrospect, after touring the record and after playing playing the record out in front of like fifty to seven thousand people, yeah. how do you feel like the the it's consumer all, reaction? You know what? It's all record? worth it when you play a show like you play at Bloomfield Ave or at, or at Knitting, where they're like, I don't even have to sing that much, and it's like awesome. You know what I mean? Like they're just singing every word. It's so worth it. It's like, oh well. <clears throat> We know we may have gotten like pneumonia for like nine months and and had no clean clothes or anything like that and you know but it was all worth it you know it was totally right, well I mean that was your first show back since November yeah yeah right how did you feel coming home to such a a welcome back and it, playing in like a hundred something degree weather I'll tell you like well yeah oh. Bloomfield yeah was like it was a health hazard but it was awesome and it was just like. It felt so good because it felt like, especially like knitting really was really, knitting solidified it for me because it was just kind of like, it made us feel, it made me feel prepared for what's coming, you know what I mean? Right. And it was just like, wow, okay, like we have our home support and we, I feel really strong from playing in front of these people and these people are making me feel really strong, mm-hmm. like all the fans and all the street teamers and all the supporters in the industry or whatever that came out, it made me feel really strong right. about what's going to happen and and. That's so to me. It was awesome. You know? Unfortunately, I couldn't make it to the Knitting Factory show because it was on a Thursday. I don't know where, where where I am on a Thursday. So let, let's hear about like you know what made you feel like this way since um since it was such a powerful reaction. It was reaction. it was seriously like it wasn't like cheering and crap like that. It was just seriously like I genuinely felt support and like every time we said something to them, they responded and they understood and like because we have a lot of stuff to say, not just about. Not just what's on the record, like stuff about music and the industry and recording and being a band and risking your life and, and like being in the van for like nine months and never seeing your family and never seeing your loved ones and having relationships fall apart because of it. And, you know, it, it just all made it worthwhile. It made us say, wow, like these are our kids. These are our people. You know, not just right. kids. They're people. They're our people. And like they're there for us. And we're, and we're able to give something back to them and we're able to play like as amazingly as we can because they're putting out the energy and we're giving it right back to them, you know? Right. And, and seriously, it made me ready to do whatever we need to do for the next 10 months. Right. And, going on in months. And a lot of people who have been following your and following like have been quarters when, when they're like in the first show and there's only like 20 kids out there going, oh, who's band? They're pretty good. Yeah. And and now they're like, oh, what's next? What's the next step in my chemical romance? Well, I, I mean, I remember back when like, we did our interview here, you were the first person to break us on the radio. And I think that's amazing to have, like, uh, somebody that actually, like, that, you know, as a friend of yours you care about and, like, has a good show, has something to say to people, bringing them new music is the person that breaks you on the radio. But but what what is about to happen to us is, like, we just want the record to get out there as much as possible, and that's still going to happen. And people are going to be able to find that record right now We're in the studio every day, seven days a week, writing new music, you know? We get in there at one thirty. We plug in and we Two write. Two o'clock, you guys are <laughs> <laughs> late sometimes. Let's not talk about who's late here at an hour but and a half. We get in there and, and we we usually, we haven't left the studio since, since we've gotten back from tour and not have something new. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I know there's a lot of people anxious out there. They want to know, how is it going? It's going so good. And like, so you have a lot of positive things to say. A lot of positive things. You know, we've got hot. stuff on there that people are going to be able to identify with from our last record as far as like the fact that we're still a punk rock band. We're still like a punk rock band that likes metal and likes dark things and stuff like that. But there's so much growth and there's so much progress happening that there's songs that like the only way you're going to recognize us is by hear you're going to hear us play them. But that's the only way. Like, the, there's such a difference. And so you think there's a, a progression in the music and the music writing? And... I think if we didn't have a progression, then we wouldn't survive. You know what I mean? Right, but you don't think that you're 
straying so far away no. from the original My Chemical not Romance at all. I think, formula. No, not no, at all. It's always going to be My Chemical Romance. Uh, like, you can hear yeah, it. In there, it's just know? us playing, like, more, I don't know, us exploring different things that we... Where do you think like. you're going? What direction do you think you're going in? You think you're going in more of a, a metal or punk rock direction? Okay, That I can't even say, because there's stuff that's metal and punk rock in every song we've written. But, I mean, there's there's songs that, you know, it's... I can't even say, like, really. You know, it's not more metal, not more punk rock. It's just... We're not setting know. out to be like, oh, all right, this is going to sound more like this. Or, yeah. you know, like, it's just whatever the f heck comes out. <laughs> yeah, good self-edit right there. <laughs> yeah. He gets a high five later. Yeah, and that's the beauty of, like, what we're doing right now. Is somebody gave me, like, my friend Mike Ivino, he was a band uh, called Murder One. They, the UK, WSU supported them very heavily. I saw him at a comic store, like, a week ago, and he gave me some very good advice, and he was like... Gerard, no matter what happens, just remember that. Just remember when you started it, it was fun. When you started writing your first album, it was a lot of fun. You did it for fun. Just because you're getting all this attention, just because great things are happening for you, doesn't mean it should stop being fun. It should start being work, and that there should be pressures attached to that. Like, forget about that. Like, still write the songs for fun. Still write the songs because you want to play them live. And, like, that's what we're doing now. We're still writing the same stuff we would have written had had we not even, like... You know, had this next record not even have a home, you know, we would be writing the same record. Like right. whatever comes out, we just get in there and say, "All right, this sounds like a um, like a pirate shanty or whatever." That's that's it. That's just what we wrote that day. And if it ends up on the record, whatever, you know. Right. So, do you see right now with you writing new music? Do you see any new themes developing? Well, the next record is definitely going to be about revenge because it's a subject that we touched upon with bullets, and it's a subject that. Um, uh, Bullets was more like wistful. It's more like about Romeo and Juliet type um, star-crossed lovers and stuff like that. Like Demolition Lovers captures like the theme of the whole record, you know. Um, two people willing to die in a gun battle for each other and stuff like that. The next record's stepping a little away from that kind of romanticism about it. And it's going more into the like coming back from the dead to get revenge. And the next record is definitely going to be a concept album about coming back from the dead and getting revenge so the next so, record will be a concept record it will yeah be a theme just record. like the first like i don't think any record we make is going to be not a concept record because right. i think i think kids record, enjoy that though i think kids enjoy a story to read i think totally i mean like you gotta tell a story like you know if i wasn't doing this i'd be telling stories so to me it's just another extension of telling stories but these are stories that have meanings they have metaphors and they have they have something to say to you um yeah well we're gonna we're gonna be uh discussing the new record in uh i suppose in detail soon we're just gonna try to we're gonna play playing more music now and uh for those of you who've never heard my chemical romance you can hear some of the record right now if you haven't um make sure you request them on regular rotation here on 89.5 fm ws so you if you have any questions for them if you dig them well, dig what they're saying give us a call 973-761 wso and uh leave off right now <laughs> so we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go ahead and play a song what do you got? I don't know if we have time. Should we, we have hear, plenty of time. Should we hear demo since he was... That's on? demos. Yeah, everyone, everyone's here, Demolition Lovers. Right. I feel bad, though. I want to play some other bands. Like, why do we oh, have to listen to us? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to play a My Chemical Romance Takes Over Under the Stars uh, playlist in maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. Thank God. Something I'm like tired that. of hearing us. <laughs> I'm sure everybody else is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to hear Demolition Lovers, which is the final track on the My Chemical Romance CD. I brought you... My bullets, you brought me your love. And um, we'll be back. So if you enjoy this, give us a call, 973-761-WSOU. Yeah, we're back here with My Chemical Romance here on 89.5 FM, WSOU. And, um, well, Mikey's not back from doing whatever he had to do. Gerard's here. Hey! We got, we got people here. So we're going we're gonna to ask a couple questions from you listeners. So, all right. First of all... Um, First and foremost, Spacey says hi. Hey, Spacey. Oh, oh. So what's up, Spacey? What's up, dude? You're a sweet dude. Shows, man. Yeah, uh, Spacey, I'll give you. I'll give you a little um, background on him. Um, <laughs> he is a guy. He's, he's been. He's been to our shows since we played Delaware, which is literally like in the first month and a half. And yeah, that kid's got some sweet hair. Yeah, Delaware, sweet Delaware, Delaware. You have an interesting story about Delaware, Do don't we? you? Do we? Wasn't there like a, a fight or something that yeah, happened that in Delaware? Oh, <laughs> some some kid around? came to see us. Not the other bands at the show, and he got wasted. He's wearing an Iron Maiden shirt. <laughs> he he was so wasted that he 
was dancing so hard he cleared the room practically and then he he basically dove Car into <laughs> element 101's drum set <laughs> and his no it was both at the same yeah. Yeah. he, broke the he destroyed hand. like yeah we had a guy come out to oh. that and he destroyed the <laughs> that's hilarious so, yeah. so thank you delaware guy <laughs> uh yeah so that's the story about delaware <laughs> all right so uh kim and chris they oh, like hey. they, they want to know if you get all sweaty and smelly Oh my, <laughs> oh my god Even before we go on <laughs> I have a leather jacket I can show you Kim well, and Chris no, no. That will turn no, no. your stomach Wait that's Kim and Chris from Snapchat Yeah right? yeah yeah All right. Yeah no we Yeah we Why'd get you call and ask us to our faces Kim and Chris <laughs> <laughs> Yeah we definitely get Oh yeah. Mikey's standing up He means business now <laughs> Apparently, We definitely get <laughs> Mikey what are you <laughs> what Terribly you stinky doing? and smelly <laughs> <laughs> Mike's Who looking at you? CDs. Um, yeah, we get we no, get no. we get raunchy, dude. Smell wise. All right, Star Child fifty four would like to know oh, if Jared. Sweet, sweet screen name, dude. Hey Jared. Sweet screen, oh Jared. Jared. Oh hello. Oh hello. <laughs> Jared, did you see Cake Boy? Was that the person? <laughs> oh Cake Boy. Yeah, that's Mike. Mike's name. I I forgot his stage name was Cake Boy. <laughs> That's who I saw. And Jared is, is, is Gerard. It's Gerard. <laughs> I don't know what he, but his stage Jared name is Gerard. Is Gerard. <laughs> huh? Also, what's your deal with men's, mental institutions? Menstrual institutions. <laughs> <laughs> what's my deal what's with What's your deal them? with them? What's your deal with menstrual institutions? I don't even think I talk about one on the first record, so I don't know where that's coming um, from. But th Maybe uh, <laughs> any shows that you talked about? Uh, maybe. I mean, okay. The only one it was a Pepsi. I, yeah, I've been to a therapist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people have been to a therapist. I got know? that. <laughs> no, uh, I, my dear, I think they're they're sweet places. I'm gonna, I I would like to take a, I'd love to take a vacation Wait, at a mental really institution. Weird, wasn't there a, a, the new song? The new one. We actually, you know, what's funny about that? That's we're right. Weird. We wrote a new song today. That's about a mental institution. So what's about? So, so what's your they want to know what you feel. So you're either clairvoyant or you were sneaking in on our practice. Neither <laughs> way, we had to put a couple of space. <laughs> Camaro uh, wants to know what vampires never hurt you. Vampires never hurt you. Obviously, obviously vampires don't exist. It's obviously metaphorical. Just so everybody knows. I don't believe in vampires. Don't believe uh, in jerk. It's about basically CD bars and CD people you meet at those CD bars that will have nothing better to do than to keep you from like growing up and or being responsible and not drinking and not being an alcoholic and just sucking you into their world. Sucking you know? Mel uh, Mel Torme. Uh, Mel Torme. Uh, and <laughs> no, it's about it's about it's about that. It's it's you know, there's no such thing as vampires. And I know that. And, um, you just broke a lot of kids' what about hearts. And uh those are the, and uh and you should know that too. Like wise up, dude. <laughs> Like it's just movies. Come on, and uh, and uh, seriously, it's a metaphor for other things in life, be it drug addiction, heroin addiction, stuff like that, and and being Coca Cola, Coca Cola, and being involved, being involved with really crappy people. You know what I mean? Like people just have nothing better to do with their lives than to drink with you and drag you down with them. Like and uh, cigarettes. What? <laughs> no. Um, that's fine, man. You do have your nose on Frank's shoulder. Oh, I was <laughs> Wait, a month ago. Oh, no. congratulations, Props. dude. Did we just smoking waves like a week ago? Oh, no. <laughs> oh the I had, was All right, we, ha we have a question from a special um, guest who was at the knitting, um, knitting factory. Derek, I believe it was. No, Drew. Drew, sorry, Drew. I'm sorry, Drew. <laughs> Not Derek. Remember that. <laughs> two oh, who? The answer is yes. Yeah, he, I think. He the <laughs> yeah. Mike, he doesn't know what the question is, but he says the answer is yes. Took a picture or something. She's What's like, the yeah. question? Anyway, the question is, he'd like to know what that new sleep de deprivation song is about. Yes. So let's talk about that. Uh, a resounding yes. Um, it is about sleep deprivation. Oh, really? <laughs> now it's, called, really it's called it's called Sister to Sleep, uh -huh. and it's about um, if you guys are familiar with comic books, I'm gonna get a little dorky for a minute. And if you guys have read Sandman, um, the sister of sleep in the Sandman comic, the Sandman he sleep right. His sister is death, so. Yeah. It's the sister to sleep, but sleep and death are very similar. So um, I wrote a song about that, and uh, um, that's it. It's about sleep deprivation, being in a sleep deprivation, like an institute for that, and not being able to sleep, and then people trying to make you sleep, and if you go to sleep, you're going to die, and you know it, so you're, you're trying not to. So that's that's about. So reasons for insomnia, huh? <laughs>
<laughs> All right, you want to really hear the real story? <laughs> <laughs> you want to really hear the story behind the song? All right, I'm you gonna tell you. Get Wait, to yeah, right yeah. Okay, okay. Listen, we were we. It was like two days into in our new songwriting process, right? And so we had a couple. We had a lot of parts actually lying around from before we left for tour, when we got back from tour, whatever. So anyway. Uh, what, whatever BS involved, what labels, <laughs> crap like that involved, whatever. It, it comes an opportunity for us to be on the uh, phrase. Uh, <laughs> Freddie <laughs> versus Jason, Jason soundtrack. Eddie soundtrack. No, Jason versus Freddie. That movie that's coming out, right? That which yeah. I am completely. I'm really psyched awesome. about it. Uh, there's a chance that we were going to be on the soundtrack, so we're like, okay, well, we have a song. I could make it on the soundtrack. And it's Let's pretty write. sweet. Let's write it. Let's just finish it today. <laughs> and so we're doing it, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this song about sleep deprivation because, or, or having nightmares because, you know, obviously that's Freddy Krueger. Um, we're into that. And we're in the, we've been in a horror movie since the first record. You could obviously tell that, you know. So it was very natural for us to write that, and we just did it. And we said, okay, it's about Freddy Krueger. So there you go. Never. We got screwed, and it's not going to be on there. <laughs> <laughs> we got stuck so with the Sleep Deprivation song. Now we got to say it's about much deeper things. Yeah. <laughs> so is this a song that you think is going to make it to the record, or is you I think love it's going to be a B-song? We, we love it. Yeah. yeah. We think so. Yeah. I mean, in the end, it was just like, wow, like, it's, yeah. <laughs> like, it's really <laughs> mature, and it's really, like, it doesn't have to be about Freddy Krueger. <laughs> it can be about sleep deprivation. So, um, so yeah, we were psyched on it. We played it live, and it kids started moshing as soon as we hit the first note. So we're like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've hit the 11 o'clock hour, and you're listening to WSU South Orange. And what we're going to do is we're going to play maybe uh, one or two more My Chemical Romance songs from the first CD. We're going to try to figure out... <laughs> yeah, we played everything already, and... Two songs. Uh, <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to try to play you uh, a new song off of the live um, Reading Factory show. If we can figure out the technicalities to that. Yeah. We're, um, yeah. If not, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a My Chemical Romance Takes Over Under the Stars show. So um, um, you guys feel free. Uh, oh, we got Damien Black Sandal. Hey. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, how are you today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, Frank, you? that is me. Sometimes he manages to sneak his way up in here when the chemical romance is, uh, or any band is me actually. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you sn sneak through the elevators? <laughs> He's sitting here watching us the whole time. Mario, I've actually, looking yeah. for a good spot to intro. I've actually been, uh, been drinking with these kids for a while. Coca Cola. <laughs> but um, I do have some right. interesting questions. Yo, how's that new Sprite remix? What? That new Sprite oh, remix. That. Sprite remix kind of sucks. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna hear uh, "Vampires Never Hurt You," and we'll be back with um, additional questions. Oh, and some giveaways. I believe we have some giveaways. So, oh sure. <laughs> oh, let's have some. No, we've got them. <laughs> Autograph pictures of uh, Gerard. <laughs> oh. Autograph pictures of, of Jack. Oh wait. Oh, I have a question, Gerard. Yeah. Um, how on earth did you get your way onto uh, Spin Magazine? Um. It's just <laughs> <laughs> little this, little that. Little. All right, let's just say I'm good at the rodeo. I'm good at riding the mechanical bull. All right, it's a really simple thing. It's a really simple story. Um, they they want to do this fashion feature about up and coming up and coming up and, about up and coming singers in the New York City area and. Um, we have a friend who happens to work at Spin. She was actually helped us out a lot in the beginning, and she she suggested us as one of those bands. They were like, okay, let's check them out. And they had actually seen us at Irving, a Spin magazine. So they were like, okay, sure, let's fly them out. And they flew me out from from a, from a, we did a tour on the West Coast, ended on the West Coast to take them back Sunday. Yeah, they rode all the way in the van from California. They rode all the way in the van, <laughs> but I got on the sweet airplane. Oh, so you got to leave the band, get on an airplane? Get on an airplane. Well, we drove across the entire country. They drove across the entire country. <laughs> so how did the rest of the band feel about this? Well, you, Were you guys? Uh... I don't care how they feel, because let me tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> because I hate airplanes, so yeah. I would have rather been in a van. No, <laughs> you, no, no you I'm dead talk... serious. I would trade you. Dude, you should tell them about the, uh, the van. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Later on. I'll yeah, that's about later. A, I, I had a dream last night about a flying van. And we, we'll <laughs> save it. We'll save it. All right, we're going to save that. All right. So, yeah, so, yeah, so right. make sure you guys stick around. we still got an hour here with People Under the Stars. So, the my chemical romance is up here. And here's Vampires Will Never Hurt You. Here on 89.5 FM WSU. Okay. I know that's the song most of y'all want to listen to. 
Uh, we probably have one more before we got to hear one more My Chemical song. But um, we're also going to be playing some of their, their favorite songs here of, of all time. I know Gerard is dying to hear some. Uh, actually, I'm not even going to tell you what he's dying to hear because it's going to be a complete surprise when everybody oh, hears sweet. it. It is sweet. But um, hey. Hey. Oh, what's going on here? Mr. Cuffs. Uh, we're, all, we're all here chewing on some uh, lollipops. Uh, Andy, can you hear me, Andy? I don't think he can. Anyway, uh, I, I think that he's uh, helping me out here with the DAT player, right? Yeah. All right, so Andy is in the other room trying to help me out with the DAT player. There's people calling up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hand things over to uh, Damien from uh, the Black Sox scandal. He's got a few questions of his own to ask. And it's always fun when Damien has questions to ask. So we're going to chill out. I'm going to go try to figure out what's going on with that machine. We're going to play another My Chemical Romance song, and then we're going to play whatever they want to hear. So you're all in trouble, you know? Ooh. So um, give us a call if you have any questions before we get off the air. 973 Seven six one W S O U. Yeah, really seriously, there's there's dudes out there that are fans of our band. Even if if you if you hate us, yeah, no, ask us. Especially if you hate us, <laughs> ask us whatever you want. Yeah, that's right. Call up. My engineer is ready. Dressful. He's by the phone. <laughs> so call up nine seven three seven six one nine seven six eight. I don't care. Wait a second. Oh, just make sure. No, no, I was just gonna say, just make sure you throw quarters at him. Oh, you want to hear a quarter? I'll tell you. I'll tell you a quarter. <laughs> You guys want to hear the quarter story? <laughs> if you live in... No, we're going to skip it. But let's just say, if you live in Des Moines, Iowa, you know what? You know me and I don't like quarters being thrown at me when I say. Just throw nickels at him instead, dude. He won't care as much. <laughs> all night. <laughs> it's the first thing Mikey Way said all night long. All right, so here we go. If the scandal hard, drops not there. So, all right, I get to talk to, uh, talk to Frank. Hey, come here. Oh, wait, not We're in an old called uh, Pensy Prep. So, good band you checked out. How do you feel about coming from Pensy Prep to uh, My Chem? Um, it was kind of cool because uh, when Pensy was together, uh, My Chem started and uh, they recorded a demo in uh, Poupon's Attic. And uh, we got the demo, it became our favorite CD that we had. We used to listen to it like before we go to shows and stuff like that. You know, I we knew Mikey because uh, Mikey oh, was cool. <laughs> Mikey yeah, was good. Out? Yeah, Mikey tried out guitar, and and uh, um, he didn't make it. But <laughs> no hard feelings there. <laughs> <laughs> so then he tried out for my chem. Yeah, so they tried out for my chem, and he he made it. He did it there. Um, uh, what do you want? I mean, <laughs> we all became friends. We started playing shows together. And then uh, Pensy broke up. Is the reason that we're even a band right now? Because we seriously, God's honest truth, would have never gotten the work ethic to be a real band unless we met these guys. Because these guys practice every day, and we're like, "What's up with that?" <laughs> like they're practicing every day. They played shows all the time. We're like, "Wow, they play like you know." <laughs> no, we heard that you had sex with uh, Damien's mom. What was? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, Adam. Oh, absolutely harsh. terrible. Harsh. Harsh. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys, guys want to play off knitting? Let's play Death Wish. He says Death Wish is a really good version. Play Death Wish. Whatever. Uh, yeah. It's the bad, whatever. Bad song. It was fun. The, the new one, yeah. Ah, no, on. not the new one. No. From sound, yeah, exactly. From sound check, it was good, but live, whatever. Okay. All right, it's live, so, like, if it's not good, do you really care? Yeah, we're like, gonna I mean, come on. Death Wish. They're going to play it off a of DAT from a Knitting Factory show. Um, It's probably the first recording that you can hear of this song, so. <laughs> That's kind of clear. <laughs> it's off a board. So, all right, Damien, you have questions? Yeah, all right. sorry. Gerard, what were you thinking of doing, say, if the band didn't get off the ground, what your plans were before you started the band? Well, before I was in the band, you want to know what I was doing? Besides heroin. <laughs> I was working at a bookstore with my brother. A female hero. Oh, yes. Yeah, Barnes & Noble? Barnes & Noble? Barnes & Noble bookstore, yeah. Clifton. Working there, doing nothing with my life. Trying to be a comic book artist, and it wasn't working. I went to school for four years at SVA in New York City to be a comic book artist. And, uh, didn't, I, you have, actually, didn't you have something briefly with Comedy Central for a little while before? I had, I had meetings with Comedy Central because I had a cartoon called The Breakfast Monkey mm -hmm. that was supposed to... They were they were really into it for a while. And then, I love that cartoon, by the way. We had, yeah, awesome. I have an animatic of it We're still. So do, do you still have it online? Where could people see it? There used to be an animatic of it online. Animatic is like, it's not a real animation. It's storyboards that are put to sound and music. So you get an idea of what the show is like. 
I really should put it on the on our website because yeah. it's really funny. It's a lot of fun. And it was just about this little monkey from Scandinavia that <clears throat> is obsessed with breakfast. Genius. And he has magical powers. <laughs> and he flies. And that's like the whole show. And um and it was it was just a lot of fun. So that's what I was doing. I mean, but I was not very successful at doing anything art related, so I had a lot to say, and there was nothing, there was no way that I thought in my immediate future I was going to be able to say it. And then a little right. nervous breakdown helped out a lot. And then a nervous, and then so I was like, you know what? I want to be in a band. It was my first ever, my first, it was my first passion. It was my first love. And I was like, wait, maybe I'm destined to be a band. And let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. You want to hear a story of Ray Toro? Be quiet. Go right ahead. It's a very, you really touch I haven't said a thing. No, you've been laughing like no, a joke. No. We're living it. Yo, you ever see Conan wait. where he's doing the whole bit and then there's like the... Wait, you watched Conan? The other day they showed Conan the Destroyer. Conan the Destroyer, dude. On TBS. Oh my God, that was amazing. You watched it? Me and my mom watched it the other day, dude. You guys need to shut up. We're having complete and utter chaos here. So I hope you're enjoying this. And uh, SOU, we have a bunch of... um. <laughs> Crazy kids here, and they're they're having a wait, good old time wait, wait. here. here, here. Mr. Hey, four eyes. Let me get in there. Keep bro. it quiet, Gerard. <laughs> why didn't you tell your story? Okay, listen to this story. Like seriously, I have a friend named Dennis Velez, right? Okay, you know the Mikey. This 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 uh, lollipop you threw my head broke. It shattered. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard. You threw it in my head. Mikey, come on, no, 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 Yo, show some respect for the. Like he's out of control. Please. His hair is out of control. Show some respect. Seriously, <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on <laughs> Okay, seriously. Oh, shit, come on, come on. <laughs> no, it's a story. Oh, my God. I just want to hear it. Anyway, I, there's a guy named Dan Les. His friend is Dan Ask. He's called Shock Mavada. <laughs> I wanted to shout this guy's up so bad. Shock Mavada is like the best band to come out of Jersey in a long time. Anyway, oh, is it good? My friend Dennis. <laughs> my friend. My friend no, Dennis Velez. My friend. <laughs> you guys got to shut up. My friend, that is Les. I went to high school. No, I was in middle school. I was in elementary school with the kid. Anyway, he had a, he had an uncle named TT, right? He was all into, like, voodoo and stuff, right? So I forgot about this. When I was a kid, right, he was like, I was like, TT, what am I going to be when I grow up, right? Because he was, like, used to see into the future and stuff. <laughs> so, he, no, let me tell you this story. So he's like, he's like, you're going to be on the stage. I see you on the stage with lots of lights. And I was like, no, I want to be an artist. I want to be a comic book artist, right? And he's like, no, 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 you're not going to do that. You're going to be on the stage, right? So I talked to Dennis. Like, I forgot all about this, right? I talked to Dennis like a week ago on the phone. And uh, I was, he was like, I was like, yeah, like, I never thought I'd be doing this. I thought I was going to be a comic book artist or something. He's like, no, dude, remember what TT said? He's like, you said, he said, Gerard, you're going to be on the stage. And I was like, oh, how's TT doing? He's like, he's dead. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, whoa. That's not funny. That's not funny at all, dude. <laughs> So, he got killed for being a liar. No. <laughs> no, he's... TT was a sweet dude. And Dennis, Dennis, if you're out there, bro, I feel you on that. It's TT. I feel you on The next song you play goes out to TT. Dude, right. I'm so glad that you didn't become, like, a professional mime. Right. That trial for rent pretty well. All right, we're going we're gonna to hit another My Chemical Romance song. I believe we have the that situation um, really? just about uh, figured out, so... Okay, yeah. there's, a, there's a live track. It's called... Uh, but we're not going to hit the live track just uh, yet. We're going to hit track six now. Okay. And then when we come back, in hopes, we're going to do uh, the live track. Okay, so, okay. Track six off of uh, I Brought You My Bullets. You brought me your love. Wow. Yeah, it's we're back here that. with uh, My Chemical Romance. It's live. It's and... Um, uh, there you heard uh, song number six with, uh, I believe that was uh, Head First for Halos, right? Yeah. And, um... <laughs> All right, what we're going to do now is we have a very special thing. Before we get into uh, My Chemical Romance picks out whatever they want to listen to and we're going to play it, uh, we're going to play a brand new song that they've uh, written and they've been performing live as of late and might just make it to the new record, right? Definitely. So <laughs> it's definitely we got, else. we got nothing else that's worthy of it. No. Um, All right, so this, intro the song and we're gonna hit this. Okay, this song is called "It's Not a Fashion Statement." It's a death wish, and uh, it's gonna be on our next record for sure. And uh, this is us live at the Knitting Factory. So, yeah, keep that in mind. And and if you think that's a little sloppy, then you can meet me in the Seven Eleven parking lot, and we'll take care of that. All right, so hit it. Hit it. Hit it. We're hitting it. W 
Slash O. This is goes out to Gerard. We are back here with uh, My Chemical Romance. We just heard some Weezer that, uh, by their request before that, you also heard some Iron Maiden. We have a whole bunch of stuff lined up. We also have some Little Joe Gould, also known as uh, Murder by Death right now, who uh, you can find on uh, Eyeball Records if you go to Vintage Vinyl or Let It Rock or something. I'm sure you can find that. They just played a show with My Chemical Romance at Bloomfield Ave. And if you guys were there, you were, I'm sure, you cannot have not been absolutely blown away by this band. So make sure you picked up that. But uh, before that, I believe Frankie has something to say. So what's up, dude? Uh, I would just like to refer back to a previous question about uh, Fancy Prep. And uh, the reason that Mikey, uh, bass guitar away, didn't make it into um, Fancy Prep is because we're a bunch of damn fools. And that's about it. That's all I wanted to say about that. And he's uh, a great addition to My Chemical Romance. We love him very much. And he's a sweet little dude. And he's so <laughs> wasted on Coca-Cola. <laughs> He's got a great mouth. Mikey, the world wants He's a sweet little dude. Oh, hello. So, Mikey, uh, how's the tour been to you? Pretty excellent. How about you? Uh, I didn't go on tour. <laughs> you didn't go on tour at all. Mike, Mikey, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> that means the mic's not yours. Okay. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey I have a question. about your large, attractive phallus. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> Mikey, Mikey, I have a question, and you're, and you're probably going to be really angry oh, okay. after I ask this. It's actually large and attractive. I just want... <laughs> and I have a. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just want to know how many cans of hairspray you go through a week. Oh man! No, it ends up all over everything um, in the band. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Yeah, yeah, seriously, like you go backstage. Whenever we're on tour with your band in the future, whatever, it's like a Molly Crew concert. There's hairspray and there's hair gel and there's like all kinds of hair stuff going on. Mikey. It's Mikey and me and like. Yeah, that's about it. It's the only guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, a lot of hair. <laughs> you don't want to cool it with good hair. Hair. <laughs> what do we got lined up? We got who's afraid? I'm afraid of who's afraid of Virginia Woolf here Ooh. by uh, yeah. Murder by Death. Well, I'm at number seven. Oh, I'm at number seven too. These guys are sweet little dudes. <laughs> sweet little dudes like Little Joe. Wow. Yeah, and we love them. No, really. All right, we're almost out of here, so we're gonna we're gonna hit some we're eyeball record stuff. Um, here, time. man, this goes out to Alex. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, everybody? We're just about out of here. They're, they're like touching each other over here and, and trying to like figure out what they're playing. When's the next time you're playing that people can see you guys? Oh, we're announce playing the next shows. Saturday. Saturday, yeah, we're playing Saturday. Hellfest. With the Bouncing Souls, which is one of the bands that's coming yes. next. Yes, we're going to play Bouncing Souls. Frank, all right, all right. Frankie, Frankie, uh, we've been on tour for a long time together, so you get to learn stuff about people. And this thing we learned about Frank is that Frank loves the Bouncing Souls. And whenever Frank drives, it's all he plays. <laughs> <laughs> that and Black Flag, and which um, is another band that's coming up. Oh, we're going to be playing yeah, Black Flag as well. Yeah, Black Flag is a band me and Frank both love mutually, so that's why we get along a lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Bouncing Souls, band Frank's been talking about for a long time. I never got into them. I never understood them. And then Frank was like, no. And I sat up for a drive with Frank one night for like, it was like a seven-hour drive or something. And he was like, you know, you're going to listen to every Bouncing Souls. <laughs> And I finally got it, and I was like, "Wow, these are guys just writing songs for themselves and their friends." And I was like, "This is this is awesome." And like, we got to play with them. We did a show at uh, Outdoors. What was that? Mother <laughs> Flipper. <laughs> anyway, we anyway, were, yeah, we were sit. Seriously, we were awful. I was in. I was in their truck. They they tour in this truck. Like this is a band that's like fully functional, self reliant. <laughs> like. They have their own truck, and they have their own truck that they sleep in. It's just like a moving truck, but they sleep in it, and they have bunks in it. I was hanging out in, the, in there with, with um, Tom Andrew, who's like, who's like uh, Kate, Iger, and like, Ben is so rad. I was, I was hanging out with them. We're having so much fun that I almost missed our set that day. And um, so yeah, right. this is a band that I'd never understood before Frank turned me on to. I finally got them, and we want to play them for you right now. All right, we're going to play them. But for, before that, we're going to play some Black Flag, Gorilla Biscuits, and then finally... We're going to play the Bouncing Souls to get out of okay. here. So I just want to thank you guys for coming up. We had thank a great you, time. Yes. Thank I, you, Mario. I know everyone in New Jersey is very proud of you guys, and we're all happy that uh, you guys are blowing up and representing New Jeru like it should be. You know? So uh, thank you guys, and uh, hopefully we'll have you guys up again before um, you know the time is up. Yeah.
So um, sometime before August, hopefully before you guys get out of here and before I get out of here. Yeah. Well, yeah, Mario, you, this, we'll the under, this is the last season. This is the last season of Under the Stars, guys. Oh, I don't know if it's going right. to continue past this summer or not. So. Really? Yay. Wow. We're trying to give you, you a good send-off. Support your local DJ. <laughs> 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 you heard it so <laughs> alright thanks guys we're getting out of here Angry Andy is up next he's gonna rock your world till what time dude 3 o'clock in the morning he's gonna be playing there was this girl that was uh, DJing on this station I was listening to it she was like oh this new punk rock band I think down by law what the hell is going on if you have people that actually know about music please like do the scenario please so, all right, if well, I'm out of here, so... Uh, what was going on? <laughs> we're going to hear uh, Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. Yeah, so we're gonna thank hear. you. <laughs> gimme, Gimme, Gimme! I need some more!